Hello and welcome to another video from my series called Quick Falls On, in which I talk about different stories from the rich Star Trek universe. 50 years ago NBC aired a new episode of the classic Star Trek TV show, a second season episode called Uchi Vuchi Kuchiku. Sorry, I meant to say Friday's Child. And as always, these are my honest opinions about it. We start with Dr. McCoy giving his colleagues a briefing about the inhabitants of Capilla 4. He has been there a few years ago, so he is the correct person to explain to our heroes, and therefore also to us, their complicated culture. As soon as they reach the planet, a landing party beams down. A landing party consisting of Kirk, Spock, McCoy and a nameless red shirt. Well, I'm pretty sure that the unnamed uh, Red Shirt will have a long life and he will tell his grandchildren stories about all of the adventures he had with the legendary Captain Kirk. Or he gets killed within a few seconds. One of the two things. Well, he yells when he sees a Klingon amongst uh, the Capellans and grabs his phaser, so he gets a knife in his belly. During the whole episode, the main subplot is uh, intercut with a B-plot, which takes place on the Enterprise, under the command by Scotty, where they get to deal with a very strange distress call. We'll get to this later. Meanwhile, down on the planet, the landing party is taken to see Akar, the high tier of the Capellans, to negotiate the mining rights to a mineral which is needed for... oh, who cares? They need a thing these guys have and try to make uh, him a better offer than the Klingon. But not before Kirk tries to start a diplomatic conflict with a blonde woman. Akar introduces them to his pregnant wife Aline and they, after a small argument, all leave. Now, if you have seen my last video which I did about a previous episode of the classic Star Trek show, you know I criticized the editing. And the editing is actually much much worse in this episode. A lot of very important scenes are missing creating a pretty messy story, because now suddenly we cut to... how to call it? What almost all of the American media imagined will happen after the USA 2016 election? Kirk has some fun kicking some guards and they run to the previous stand to get their weapons. At least I think that's their motivation. However, there is also the Klingon, so Kirk has to of course fight him too, but their fight is interrupted by the new boss mob who has killed a car, so now yes, mob rules. The Klingon is so surprised that he teleports from standing next to Kirk in one shot to standing behind Mab in the next shot. Yeah, I said that the editing is pretty bad in this one. After that, we see what's going on on the Enterprise in the B-plot. In the main storyline, Aline is brought to the tent. According to their laws, she must die. So, killing her is apparently not enough, they simply have to be dicks to her and make sure that she burns her hand. That's... Probably just me, but I personally have a hard time watching a pregnant woman being heard on camera, even if it's just acting. Images like this activate some part of my brain and I want to punch the guy responsible. From this point of time, I officially hate Mob and love Kirk, who tries to save her even more. And that's one of the reasons why I have a huge problem with the ending of this one, but more to that in a few minutes. I'll briefly talk about the B-plot. The Enterprise receives a distress call, Scotty orders the ship to fly away from the planet to get to the ship which needs their help, but the ship is not there, and Scotty doesn't like it. But back in the real story, McCoy pretends that he's going to check Aline's arm, and Kerrigan and Spock use that as a distraction and attack the guards. Wait, why is she alive? I mean, in the previous scene, she not only accepted her fate, but basically demanded to be killed, and she also demanded Kirk to be killed, because he dared to touch her. So, why are they all alive in a tent, when in the previous scene Mob wanted to kill them right there? As I said a few episodes ago, I watched these episodes uh, with a friend, and I watched them dubbed, so is this something which was originally explained but was lost in translation? Or is this an example of another bad edit? 
Anyway, in the next scene, they are at Vasquez Rocks, another strange cat. Even though we know that they filmed a whole sequence of the four of them having to sneak silently out of the camp, and we know it because different frames from the sequence were sold to fans through Lincoln Enterprises. Anyway, Elin finally lets McCoy to touch her, so that he can fix her burnt arm. But when he touches her belly to check the baby, she slaps him. But McCoy is a doctor and not a diplomat, so he slaps her too. By the way, it's quite funny to watch this sequence frame by frame and see that Julie is actually smiling during this shot, but the unorthodox method works. She suddenly lets him touch her. So see guys, if the girl doesn't want you to touch her, just slap her. Right? That's the model of the story, I think? For some reason, I don't think that this scene could be filmed in 2017 Hollywood. After that, Kirk and Spock do something strange. They use their communicators to blow up a rock. Okay... I know that the dialogue says they're doing something different, but come on. This is not a rock falling down due to some frequency destabilizing it. This is a clear explosion. You can actually see the explosives in the first few frames of the shot if you watch this scene frame by frame. Couldn't they do something simple as just showing a close-up of the rock, then shaking the camera and putting their sound effect, and then cutting to the next shot of rocks falling on the enemies? Anyway, uh, whatever that should be, it worked. There is a barricade, so the Capellans need to find a different way how to get to our heroes. A small technical remark, the outdoor shots look very inconsistent. Some shots look like they were shot uh, during the day, while others look like they were shot late in the evening. The colors are changing between shots, just like the overall feel of the scene. And some shots look simply exceptionally bad. It's almost like they were transferred from a completely different, much higher generation print. Sometimes the colors are beautiful, other times they are just completely meh. And in some shots, like this one, actually, they look like they were shot in uh, front of a blue screen and the Vasquez Rock's background was added in post-production. Well, at least we get a famous I'm a doctor, not an escalator line. Back on the bridge, Scotty is suspicious. While in a cave, a new life is being born. I simply love the dialogue. Anybody who has seen it probably understands why I love DC Fontana's work. Short version, Aline now says that the child is McCoy's son. While Spock and Kirk are outside preparing some bows and arrows, McCoy, as an elderly person, takes a nap. So, what does Aline do? She does exactly what every grateful patient would do. She takes a rock and smacks the doctor on the head. When he wakes up, she's gone, but she left uh, them the child. Meanwhile, on the bridge of the Enterprise, Scotty, while inappropriately touching Chekhov's private parts, finds out that the distress call was just a diversion, so that the Klingons have them away from the planet, so he finally decides to get back to the planet. And then we cut to the last segment of the episode, and I honestly don't understand what the hell is going on. Let's carefully say what happens. The Capellans send a spy. He comes back and says to Mab that the Federation refugees are hiding behind the rocks. Then Aline comes to them. She says that the baby is dead and uh, that uh, she killed the Federation man. And Mab believes her. After he was told by the spy that they are hiding behind the top rocks. The Klingon wants to check if she's correct, but Mab suddenly treats him like an enemy because he doesn't believe her words. Then the Klingon gets hit by an arrow, just like uh, one of the Capellan soldiers. So now Capellans understand that the Klingon was correct and join him to attack our heroes, right? Well, no. They attack the Klingon and he shoots one of them with a phaser. Then for some reason, Mab returns Aline her life. Why? What has she done to deserve it? As I said, in my eyes, he is a despicable villain, but now he suddenly for some reason returns life to the woman who should be killed according to their laws, a woman who wants to die, and a woman who has just betrayed him. By the way, 
he has murdered her husband. So she also has no reason to like him. Uh, does he think that it's safe to leave her alive? Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying his decision is wrong. I'm saying that his decision makes no sense from what we know about uh, this person from the perspective of this episode. So what highly logical thing does he do next? He screams and gets phaser down by the Klingon. Interesting strategy. The Klingon gets a knife in his chest and uh, cavalry in form of Scotty and a bunch of red shirts come too late to the party. And the episode ends with Uchi Vuchi Kuchi Ku. And in the end we are told on the bridge that the child was named Leonard James Akar. In another shot which looks really faded. Well, what do you say about this episode? The short version? It's a mess. But the mess is mostly created in the editing room, not in the writing room, if you know what I mean. There are a bunch of pretty bad editing choices and the ending just is pretty messy for a lack of a better term. I don't know why I have a very strong feeling that the final act went through some rewrites, not done by Dorothy Fontana. Maybe I'm just a fanboy, but I failed to see how could she write something so messy. Well, on my scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is absolute garbage, 5 is average and 10 is a masterpiece, I would give this episode 7 out of 10. It's definitely above average, but because of the messy ending and some strange editing choices, I can't give it more than that. But as always, those were just my opinions. As always, I'm interested uh, to know what do you think about this episode. Did you love it, hate it, or did you just think it was okay? Let me know down in the comments section if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, and if you have some free time, feel free to watch any of the other videos you can find on my channel, you should see some links on screen right now. Thank you very much for watching, and see you soon. Bye.